let's freaking do it. Chapter 7. So here at Club Phantom, um... Yo, Kiriko finally found Fiana! And, uh, he's gone. Uh, Kokono realizes that Kiriko might not be coming back, and, uh, given the, the warfare in this country, little reason for, um, Go, uh, the arms merchant, to, like, stick around, either. Uh, Kokono isn't sure how I feel about this, but, uh, Vanilla tells her to buck up and concentrate on uh, making enough money to survive. Kiriko will be back one day, uh, with a bride, and need to have a place for them to call home. And besides, it's a waste for Kokono to cry tears for Kiriko when there's someone else close by who cares for her. Meaning, obviously, Vanilla, but... Just as she's about to go like, Burr, you, 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 Burr. Alarms. Explosions, air raids, awful. The Federation Army have decided to attack Kuman. And, uh... There you go, boom. No good. And Lint explains to, uh, Gon Nu. Uh, that he's decided not to wait for the gorillas to be dealt with and tells him to blame his own incompetence in not uh, getting the perfect soldier um, system faster. Uh, Lint meant to pull this all along because uh, he's got the secret society on his side. Uh, all that remains is for the squad sent to Kangelman Castle to clear up the rebels and uh, they have a knight who's even more thorough than uh, Lint himself is. And uh, this sounds like an excellent plan until... Kiss him. A man phones up and is like, uh, Commander Lin, is, uh, there's a, there's a Gundam from Celestial Being Gundam, uh, EX-10, uh... What the? What the buh? Uh, Airy. Uh, no, that's not Airy. That's, uh... Gri. No, it's, uh... Guru, right? But whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, he tells Boro to kill Proto One um, if he can't capture her, insisting that Ypsilon completes his transformation to a perfect soldier at all costs. And he orders uh, Ypsilon to do nothing other than uh, show him the maximum peerless power of the PS system. And to that end, he's going to give him the latest AT, specifically designed to directly funnel an AT's combat potential into his actuators. Uh, Boro adds that Kuman's about to collapse, and what matters is for Ypsilon to pursue and uh, demolish Kiriko. No worries about uh, Kangelman, he knew he was going to lose uh, from before he even had started the war. Ultimately, Ypsilon needs to show the uh, Assemble, um, uh, Mercs, the power of his uh, AT, and get the hell out. Uh, interestingly enough, it seems like Kiriko is the one who started the fighting. Boro's coming. Just one AT! Kiriko, why is that man face so squashed? He's got a little tiny fat head. Scenario 07, Blackout. And it's Kiriko and Fiana. And uh, they're off to borrow them himself. And they're gonna get him. And then they can be free. Looks like someone hit his rubber skull with a spade. Yeah, that's that dude. That's pretty much that dude. Fiana. Support attack with Kiriko deals 1.5 damage. Doesn't have support attack. Doesn't have support attack! That's fine. That's fine. We'll have to get the rating support attack. No! no! he's a bad man! I mean, Little Nicky's a bad man, but in, in a different way. Okay, 
guess our point is to come. Okay, I'm sure we'll figure out how to make that ace bonus useful at some point. Genius encounter though, so she's fucking good. Good have him, he does indeed. Well, some uh, melee attacks can't hit units in the air, like they won't have an air rating and you can't do it. And his attack is really shitty in the, against things in the air, but I gave him an A adapter, so it's good. But like Spam says, it really sucks if they don't let you. Like um, Boss Borot in um, the Alpha series and other games can't attack things in the air. And like he actually just can't do anything against like a full 50% of the enemies. He's just like, I don't exist, dude. I can't attack that man flying in the sky. I just gotta sit here and be shitty. But it's possible, right? Yeah, but. It would be nice if he wasn't completely fucking worthless and a waste of a deploy slot. But... Kiriko, are you alright? Yep. Oh, wow, just you two dudes taking it on? Yeah, we can do it. Ah, oh, jeez. But we show up and we're impressed to see that Kiriko um, not run off to hide and fight through their problems. And uh, fighting Ypsilon is now inevitable, but... Kiriko doesn't give a shit. Let's go. How you doing, Fiona? Oh, you're Black Knights. How are you doing? Nice to stay 11. Nice AT. Let's do it. They're pros. And Kiriko tells Fiona that they're good boys and can be trusted. This is Code Gear Season 2. All of Season 1 happens in Z2 Part 1. This is Z2 Part 2. So it's like. All of the season twos. Or like at least the second half when it comes to Girl Again. Which is good, gonna be a good as hell, Monica. Such speed. Something coming in real fast. Oh hey look, it's Ypsilon in his in his robot with some friends. That's the dude in the blue AT. Blah. Perfect soldier in that AT. Too strong. And Ypsilon is like, I'm unbe unbeatable. Too good. And then Federation forces show up, and look who it is! Suzuko! And, uh, Suzak! Suzak! And Kalin uh, announces himself as, uh, the Knight of Seven. And that uh, the army's objective is, uh, to vanquish all those who threaten the peace of Kuman. And he orders the loyalists and guerrillas uh, to both be attacked without exception. Uh, the Aelor's troops aren't 
too sure they like being ordered around by one of the knights of the round, but because like this, like those dudes are still independent despite be Britannia being assimilated into the Federation. And uh, if nothing else, they stand as the testament to the Britannian Emperor's continued power. If nothing else. Uh, Callan's mad as hell and wants to kill him. Kirika's like, don't worry, I got this in. We, the SR point is to blow this dude out of the sky, but he retreats at 6k, right? Yeah, he retreats at 6k. This is a shit. Yes, and remember, it's Kiriko and Fiara, they're both very special people with very special needs. And very special problems. I can't judge him. Oh shit, I really wanted her to be next to him. It's fine. Nope, no tell me. As far as I know, I'm getting him, just gotta get him. Yeah, no. Defeat the Lancelot Conquista! Retreat to him below 6,000. That's it. That's it. Very nice. <gasps> she learned. Bless. Beautiful. Beautiful. Why you so <laughs> shit stuff? She's so fucking bad. And I hate it. We can't hit fucking anything. She here I go. Helicopter be unstable, your engine is real. Well, it is a space helicopter from space. Yeah, Toto. Fight the dog. Um, like, you'd think so, but apparently the only thing she could get a hold of was this thing that was in storage. I think he's, uh, Sugita. 
アンジェルマンの首を取ることだ、うん、これ以上はやらせんコマーリが聞くのはこちらも同じだ Is that the last ditch soldier? Is he? Because their fists have got the thing in, so the, the powered punch, which is why it's only got limited ammo. Hands are for holding guns. Why would you use a knife? Why would you need a knife against something so armored? That's why he got the pile bunker. Why is Ashin do that? Well, no, because he faces things that have like flesh. And flesh like. Whereas, why would you bring a knife to punch a robot? Sosuke, then?、Uh, that's, the, that's an anti tank knife. And Full Metal Panic's not particularly real robot anyway, especially compared to Bottoms. Where the best close combat weapon is the pile bunker. And friggin' what's his face? Mellow Link, who's just got the man portable version. Just fucking run up to you and murder your ass. You're a goddamn eyesore. I think the AT is the smallest unit in the game. I think even when the full male panic fell is coming. Guns back in the game. Gernsback's at 8.4. Um, let's look up a skirp dog. Skirp dog. No, Thicker Man is not in this one. Uh, 3.8 meters. 
is, is it the scope dog? So, half as big as a arm slave. That's fucked up to me. Oh good, still in my box. Yeah, no, give a shit. Tech Man would be the smallest? No, they're smaller. They're smaller in Z3. But, and spoilers. Yeah, exactly. She's the smallest, or the biggest. Decamage default, the smallest? No, he's not. He just told you one that's smaller. If Suzuki gets. Okay, he's got. 13k I can knock off and knock off of him. That's obviously not including like enemy units that are a dude. Like the friggin' um like when Baron Asher and Pigman fly around being regular. Yeah, Bonta could be. Bonta could be. I think Bonta might be the de facto smallest other than Nono. Yeah, Bonta is two to two and a half meters tall. Yeah, Kiku is the smallest character on your side for sure. Other than Tiny Pokemon. Oh no, Bonta doesn't win! Nono's smaller than that! You keep ignoring Nono's existence! Tekka Man is supposedly uh, 2.32 meters tall. <laughs> so, depending on how tall Bonta's feeling. How tall is Jig? Jig's like regular size. He's small, but he's not that small. We could get Pugadantic and say that Tekaman Rapier is probably smaller because she's a smaller lady, but we're established, we've just established that Tekaman are tiny. That's the, that's the deal we're at right now. That's the deal. Let's have a look at G. G. Uh, he's 11 meters, so he's pretty big. He's pretty big! He's pretty big! I wish these would stop still in my box, but it doesn't matter because this reach's not canon. I mean, it happened, but we ain't keeping it. Yeah, go on. I fight the st strike dog man. That's old Jeek. Old Jeek is the. Um, 11 meters. I couldn't find New Jig called Tetsushin.
Yeah, if someone could, could do 360 no scopes. Yeah, yeah, I bet the. Uh, I bet one of the. the seasons. Be small because she's quite a tiny lady as well, but it's one of those two. One of those two is going to be the absolute smallest Decker man. So, Nono, Bonta. No, Nono! Bonta or one of the Tech Command ladies. And then regular Tech Command and then 80s. Stop. Stop doing this. This is the worst shit that's ever happened. Not satisfied with doing shit in Japan. You coming to come and fucking it all up? I'm night. I'm the knight of seven. Knight of seven of Britannia, and uh, as a knight of seven, I got duties. I'm not one of the knights of the round, so I'm doing this. Britannia, a bunch of shitheads. Yeah, well, whatever you say, lady. If we, well, cross an, yeah, if Cross Angel was good, we would be adding Lickety to that list, but unfortunately. <laughs> Nobody wanted to fucking weaponize Lickety. Which is bullshit. Suzaku. She actually says Suzaku. Suzaku. I'm like fucking Lulu, she just goes Suzaku! And then chokes on it every time. Not really looking forward to going through all of that, but I guess, like, she's not super souped up yet. She's not high as balls. Yeah, so she's got a long way to go before she's gonna be ready to fuck that dude up, which is fine and dandy. Well, she's still got, like, yeah, she's still got, like, 50, well, like, 33, 33, 43, 43, Kiriko's pretty ripped too. Yeah, okay, so his pile bunker doesn't affect enemies in the air, for example. Like, he can't hit the, the helicopter.
nice work. Waiting for my dang MX to show up. You can count. The power of that AT! It's incredible. As a perfect soldier, I can bring out the strength. Cure the coat. I'm killing you. Doesn't even need him. He's too good. He's good. Yeah, fine. Bugin, sacrifice yourself to Ipsilon. See if I can give a. I don't know. I see two guys counter. I've never seen it before. Why do I feel like that? Exactly. It's fucked up. Because he's too powerful. I mean, Kiriko literally cannot lose, so that's something. Yeah, we'll give him another big hand. <laughs> Pugs in a big pile of shit to his gun. Whee! Perfectly fine. Worthless. Looking good. But that's because it's well, out of control. So she's not gonna get more than that dude. Because she can break the will limit, so she'll have 20 points on him, which is like an extra 8% damage. Yeah, I'm probably going to use Esther to support attack on this one. Nightmare frame. No idea, but she's talking about why you got humans all in fight and why you're doing this, why you're messing with this, you garbage man. I've got the data on the sniping mode. It's the most dead. See you go face man, you well, have a well, good well, one. Well, like. See you next time, I'm gonna be, this is the well, last well, one well. anyway. Yeah, I got a highlight of the stick 
I'm on the YouTube. Curse you, Kiriko! Don't fucking go in. Well, I mean, sometimes you roll them but the dice and end up in hell. Because God does indeed play dice. Tell you what, tell you what. Why are you fighting, Proto One? I'll kill Kiriko, and then you we can be together. Ypsilon, just chill out, dude. I guess Kiriko's gonna be the one to get the answer lot, seeing as he's the biggest damage man of all fucking time. So, Ypsilon uh, discovers that his test flight uh, is no good, and he sucks. So he starts to leave, and uh, Kiriko and Fiana are going to go after him, so I guess Kiriko's not going to get them in. Patalia tells uh, Esther Callan C2 that he's going to go and get a uh, Kanjulman. And uh, Cadell and Shaka are gonna hold off everybody else. Wait a minute. You can't just end it when you kill that dude. I should have checked that that's the, the finishing condition. Because I thought it was just. like everybody. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, it's to get um, that dude below uh, 6,000. So, never mind. Second, buddy. Let's try just the the talent. Alright, uh yeah, no, that's fine, we can give that a go. I will bring around Yuffie's future that she desired. Um. 
let's give that a go, shall we? So Suzuku's like, well, I got no regrets, I try my best. And Kalan's like, what the hell are you doing? And Suzuku says, what do you think you're doing? I'm doing the most expedient thing around to bring around peace. But nobody else is buying it. And he asks Kalan why uh, she continues to fight when Zero's dead. And um, he says that she has no future if she continues battling. And then uh, before she can answer, he flies away and she just goes, fuck! Fuck! Oh, damn it! Next is you fucking asshole. Yeah, now that dude. Can he get in range? He cannot. Okay, that sucks. That sucks. Um, hopefully, Pringle Man will try and get her. My he's a bunch of junk. I needed uh, I need to do Kiriko not as close to um, Suzuku. Because I need his sense, or otherwise I can't hit this idiot. So he assault combat. Why are you continue to fight? Um. Um. His go again? His go again? Didn't happen? I guess if you just load a quick save, you just don't get the go again. Sure, okay, sure, cool, fine. Now we go again? I guess I didn't kill him. I guess I didn't get the crit before, so I didn't actually kill him. Okay, that's that's fine. Fine, I mean, I gotta reload. Because otherwise he's gonna die because he doesn't have the sense on. Yuda there. So combat, that man. 
There we go. And now, as long as he crits, you should get it. You should do the 10k, and as far as I'm aware, he has like a 99% chance to get inside. Yeah, maybe I've done it. We did it, we got everybody. We got all the shit, excellent. Not that it matters, it's not keeping this through, but just for the sake of making it easier. So, they're gonna go after him as they did before. Atari's gonna go get the guy. And so these three then go after Kiriko. And that leaves these two jokers to just hang out outside and uh Yeah, so these guys are gonna get any stray enemies headed towards uh, the palace. Well, Pitari is going off to get Kangelman, and Kadela views this as a superb chance to level up his kill count. So Vitalia goes in and knows he's got to hurry before Alors arrives. And he's murdering everybody. And he runs into Monica. She recognizes him. Uh, he tells her uh, he's fighting as part of a symbol to see Kuman modernized and uh, asks her what she's fighting for. He says, I'm. He's like, Look out, Monica! And then one of the gorillas just fucking machine guns her down. And then it's a neck. So as she's laying there, bleeding to death, um, she tells Pitari this whole war is just a farce, an experiment, as far as Kangelman's concerned. Uh, she tells him where Kangelman is, and uh, with her last breath, tells him she's glad she saw him one last time. And then he just deals one across. Bolo is uh, getting ready to get away, and he's mad as hell that Ypsilon didn't uh, get out at the first sight of uh, the Aelor showing up. Uh, and luckily, these two jokers find him, and uh, they stop him from leaving. Uh, Kiriko knows that um, Boro is to die as one of the secret society's commanders, uh, but he also knows that Boro isn't the true mastermind behind all of his problems. Uh, he asks Boro why he brought Fiana and Ypsilon to Kumen. And uh, Boro admits that the perfect soldiers still have mental problems to work out. And it's a matter of how to link their emotions and their fighting abilities. Ultimately, both Proto-1 and Ypsilon have proved too fickle. And the only way to make a truly perfect weapon is to imbue a PS with pure malice. And sadly, there's no way to reverse what's already been done to the current candidates. Ypsilon then shows up. Screams Kiriko's name, smashes into him, blows up his mech. Classic. And he's gonna dismount um, to fight Kiriko um, mano a mano on even ground. So, what are you doing, Ipsilon? Could get him back into his day He's like, no, I'm gonna beat him. Even ground, prove I'm superior. And then Piano says, no, Ipsilon. Walks up points her guns at him and tells him to leave Kiriko the hell alone and he's like you can't shoot me and she says oh I can because I love Kiriko and 
and she fires. And uh, <laughs> impossible! Kills Borrow, wounds Ypsilon. And she's like, ah! And then a bunch of military fellas come along, grab that lady, and like, Proto and you're coming with us. Kiriko! Kalen scoops up Kiriko to stop him from getting murdered by those fellas. And Kiriko's like, Viana! Kiriko, Kiriko, Viana! But they were like, we got to we got no uh, leeway, we can't rescue her. And as he vanishes into the underbrush, uh, Ypsilon vows to overcome his disgrace and kill Kiriko in front of Fiana one day. One day! Pataria kicks in the door to um, Kangelman's office, and he's astonished to see his old friend here. Uh, Pataria wants to know what Kangelman, uh, if, he is, uh, up his, if he is his friend, why he betrayed him. And Kandrum curses Bataria for being too dense to understand what he's been through, and he won't give him a straight answer as to why he started the war. Uh, apparently, uh, it really was all an experiment of some kind to Kandrum, and Bataria is going to make him pay using Kuman's traditional uh, sword form balancing. And uh, this is a risky move because Kandrum used to beat him all the time. Uh, 3 to 2 for that martial art, but Bataria's got motive to win this time. They got him, and he stabs his like, but what the? He's like, why? Why didn't you dodge? And he tells Batalia that it's time for the old ways to end. That rebellion against uh, the old is the best way to motivate the young. It's like, what? And he explains that he planned to die all along, and take with him every vestige of the old order. Uh, that's his role as king. He figures uh, he's about to go to hell, and Kumen is about to be pressed into the Federation. Uh, Alors at this very moment is probably burning both the palace and assembly X to the ground. But there's a secret route out of the country that no one else knows. And he tells Batalia to keep fighting those who would forestall the future arrival. And then he fucking dies. Yeah, look, he's fucking dead. And Batalia can only uh, allow himself a few tears for Monica and his friend. And now he's going to go meet up with everybody else. Uh, Kalan apologises to Kiriko um, for taking him away from uh, Fiana, uh, but Kiriko thanks her for the level-headed decision. And then Vitalia shows up. And so does uh, Kadela and uh, uh, Shako and Vanilla and the Goat and Coconut are here too and uh, they were saved from the X-10 by a certain mean-eyed Gundam pilot and it's like Setsuna it's like yeah that's the one um, and they've come to deliver a huge sum of money to Callan to help with the war effort and uh, that'll certainly come in handy as she reassembles the Black Knights and uh, Vanilla wants it repaid uh, someday um, uh, he does consider himself uh, one of the Black Knight's biggest supporters. Uh, and uh, he also passed his word that the team is to meet up with friends of Quatras who will be waiting for him at the border. And uh, Vitalia and friends will be uh, staying to see what they can do with Inkuman. It will be up to Kalin and friends to finish breaking down the old order and bring around a new, better one. And then Kanyu pokes his head out and he's like, D Ben! Khaled, C2, all of you, kill Kiriko! Fatalia, get him! Kill Kiriko! He's, he's done loads of crimes! And then these guys go like, Kanyu, you're the one who deserves to die for all the suffering you've caused. So they gun him down and blow him up and he, he's fucking. Then he's gone. Wah! He's fucking upside down. He's all over the show. Fuck him. And it's like, well, with that, no one left to stop us now. 
And then uh, Kiriko uh, thanks everybody. And then we get the monologue. Uh, as the green and red hell that is Kuman vanishes in the distance, Kiriko ponders Fiana's word. Love. Once it meant nothing to him, but now it would be a small candle in his heart to light the way in the next hell he'll face. Yes, love. And behind him is Roshina. And Roshina is uh, gloating over the brief time Kiriko got to spend with Fiana. He's interested to see where Kiriko had next, and inwardly uh, tells Kiriko that he's always in the palm of his hand, not like his own personal hand, he's talking about his, another his. And uh, Rochina means to see the fate of Kiriko, the abnormal life form, to the very end. Let me get the money that we spent on the idiot back. Oh, hey, look, she's.